All right, how do you turn a tragedy into a victory? Kapela Koboto is a prime example. You might have read about him uh, and how he was attacked and burned at his school in Cape Town, an event that changed his life forever. Koboto has written a book, Burnt Alive, in which he tries to motivate readers and expresses how important life is. He is going to be our guest later on, but first we have our ENCA book club members, Ropua Matsena, as well as Heidi Jokos. First of all, each of you, how did you find the book when you read it? I think the book was, uh, was a good explanation of what he went through. I must say that it does come through that he is still very young, so perhaps it was a bit difficult for him to uh, articulate exactly what he went through, also given the tragedy being burnt uh, by his uh, friends at school. That must have been very difficult for him. But I think overall uh, he tried his very best to explain the, tra the tragedy that he went through and how difficult it was for him being this young rugby player, and he thought that he had people around him that loved him, but it turned out that wasn't the case. So I think overall he tried to explain um, how he was burnt alive, but he says the flame within him is still burning, which mm. is keeping him uh, from, you know, which is keeping him motivated and pushing on through mm. life. Mm. So I'm not usually uh, a, a self-help book reader. Yeah, I was about to <laughs> say. I try, try to steer motivate. as far away yeah, from them as possible. But overall, my thoughts on the book, I, I, I was very, very excited about this um, a teenager writing a book about his experience um, and that I think was one of the biggest motivators for me to read the book is um, the, the beauty in the fact that he was burnt alive but he's not allowing those scars to hold him back from his potential and this I would assume is the first of many that are going to come and it's just going to keep getting better and better one would hope. Mm. Do you think perhaps um, it's a book that would uh, be more, would get more buyers from like the Christian and very church, people who like church? Because he makes a lot of reference to, for instance, Bible references. I think um, there's an entire chapter where he mm. references the Bible quite a lot. Yes, most definitely. Like Rupiwa said, I think it's a very uh, book that's dedicated on self-help and motivation. And he uh, refers to the Bible a lot. He refers to how he, um, refer, how he was leading on these scriptures to get him through uh, this difficult period. But Masekho, what I also think what stood out for me a lot in this book was the fact that there is still a massive racial problem within uh, rugby and, mm. and, the, and mm. that section. I think mm. that stood out for me a lot. And I think it's a clear example of um, what these you know, these guys go through when they're on the field and we don't actually see it. We hear about it, mm. but we don't actually know the kind of experience that these kids go through. So I think that was a massive highlight for me to say, it was so bad that these kids went to such an extent to actually burn him and they probably wanted him dead but he pushed through so that was another big point for me to say that it's still such a massive issue I mean this book was written um, but he was 15 when it happened mm. so and he's 19 now so that was four years ago it just shows you how deep the problem actually is mm. and it's very very disappointing I'm glad Heidi brought up that theme I thought it was something we we're going to discuss a little bit more in detail mm. is that um, no account no account he doesn't really talk about any kind of account Accountability that's been um, that's been carried out following the incident, mm. and the unfortunate thing is we've got uh, rugby bodies, cricket bodies, you know, nation, national bodies who would have heard the story and who have never come out to talk to the racial tensions between young players. You mm. think about it with the older players, uh, our national teams, and so. But young players, people like him, are getting burnt because they're receiving opportunities. Um, and then just your point. About about uh, the target market of the book, it had a very spiritual sense about it, very uh, spiritual, spiritual indeed. And even uh, when he launched the book, it was launched at a church. Mm. So I think there's a very specific kind of person that he wants to read this book, um, a teenager like himself who may have lost a, uh, some self-confidence because of an incident that may have happened at school or otherwise. So that's where I think he was kind of gunning to uh, the, the, the target market, uh, the reader of the book should be that kind of of person mm -hmm. yeah and also we read about the tragedy happening and no accountability in terms of somebody being arrested mm -hmm. um, surely if he was at school I would think as I was reading this I thought surely somebody would have seen who attacked this boy maybe they're scared to come forward I mean he was still at school and there were still pupils there so it also is painful to realize that he didn't get any he still doesn't have any justice but also to realize that his mother and father even gave up on him getting any justice because they were tired of 
him being yeah. in the news. Exactly, and reporting it to the police station. He even says in the book, my parents would go to the police station almost every single day and say, how far is the case? Mm -hmm. And the, the police would just say, we still investigate. But what also stood out for me was when he went back to school. He was in a coma for 26 days. He was in ICU. Mm -hmm. He had... Um, how many surgeries was it? It was like over 20 oh, surgeries. But, yeah. And he went back to school thinking, I'm going to do this. I'm going to push forward. Um, even though I was burnt, the fire is still burning inside me. I want to be something in life. And when he got back to school, everybody was laughing at him and everybody teased him. And that's what he decided, actually, I can't do this. And he took a gap year. And he even indicates in the book how there was this one person that helped him on mm. social media, mm. brought this issue to light. And uh, now he's going through online schooling. But uh, it just shows you how nobody wants to speak up and it speaks to the kind of bullying that happens in school. Mm. I mean if I think about my schooling career, I was bullied all the time. I always stood out because I was the Greek girl with dark hair <laughs> and I looked so different to any, yeah. everybody else but fortunately I didn't go through such a bad experience but it just speaks to how nobody wants to speak up and it's such a bad uh, kind of culture that's being created in, in schools. That's the word culture. Um, boys schools is this culture where boys protect each other so I don't know if you know about the initiation of you know your grade eights and things like that and um, that's why you wouldn't see any accountability within the school because there's this culture of protecting each other as boys um, and and not being uh, the weak one who spoke out about anything mm -hmm. you know so I think that's very important mm -hmm. to bring up well we do have Kapela Koboto he's actually ready for us uh, via Skype Kapela thank you very much for your time uh, congratulations on you know the success of publishing your book um, how has uh, you know how have people reacted to uh, the release of your book have you seen anyone um, a lot of people buying it yes 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 I have I have there's a lot of people buying the book almost in South Africa you won't get Almost South Africa, you won't get in years. Now, um, of course, uh, I see a lot of it uh, is about trying to motivate people through what you went through. Um, is that uh, the path you're taking to uh, probably write more motivational books? Yes, yes, yes. Um, in reality, it is about motivating, especially like you, the but let's say it's not only for a band like uh, who have who have he, he, he burning scars, but only it's 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 for a band like he, who have his scars, like a band who also have his scars, like inside them Zimbiani. As I've said, for especially like a youth, like he, from a from a car say, township, who are discouraged. Yeah, but like I'm trying to motivate, like a band Mm-hmm. I I say I, I see in uh, our conversation you're you're speaking a, a lot of his course. Uh, um, would you ever think of uh, probably writing the same to to um, actually go to uh, in, into the neck, maybe write it in the neck to speak to people in your language of comfort? Yes, yes, yes. I would, I would, I would, I would. I would. Mm, mm. Tell me a little bit more. Uh, I saw you made a lot of reference to loneliness, and that was very important. People, we look at each other at work and in, in, in many spaces, and you don't know what people are going through. But you were happy uh, before the incident happened, of course, because you were getting to, pay the, to play the sport you love. But at the same time, you were lonely because your teammates, uh, Bebek Flatela, they were not speaking to you. And then when you got home, you were still an outcast because you were that black boy in the hood who's interested in a white sport. Yes, I don't want to lie. I don't want to lie. I was very lonely even even before like I got burned cuz in Vichy. I was lonely. I was trying to fit in like that years and figure high school so I was trying to fit in, trying to be happy ever since then the same thing and same and then so like zange nabana so like let's say like real friends yeah, but so like I've been trying to fit in like now, like like from my hip, like a cool. Yeah, but, but even after the incident, when his call was as full and what January, like it's almost with December one I didn't do anything. Yeah, but I didn't do anything, but I was only at home, the challenge in the kind of in the alala, like that's what I was doing, like every day. I was only like waiting for January, his call was evolved. The day is called as Fulanga and again, everyone was turning their backs on me. Everyone was turning their backs on me. Each one is Am, Mendala Nazira, B, 
it was turning their backs on me. I don't want to lie. It was really, really, really painful. Kakul, and growing up, I was told that I was not allowed to be with my father. I was told that I was not allowed to be with my father. I was told that I was not allowed to be with my father. I was told that I was not allowed to be with my father. I was told that I was not allowed to be with my father. I was told that I was not allowed to be with my father. I was told that I was not allowed to be with my father. I was told that I was not allowed to be with my father. I was told that I was not allowed to be with my father. I was told that I was not allowed to be with my father. I was told that I was not allowed to be with my father. I was told that I was not allowed to be with my father. I was told that I was not allowed to be with my father. I was told that I was not allowed to be with my father. I was told that I was not allowed to be with my father. I was told that I was not who was playing rugby so like he can't really ball up like he did at the doctor and was to and was with Lala Paula or Candy Zale and Candy Zale Rapinoto who turned his pagamisi Leabo so like he want to lie like it was very 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 hard mm -hmm. do you still have the chance um uh, Capella to uh play the sport that you love or have they told you that you can't play that sport anymore um the day in the, before the day in the Pumanga, especially the doctor, I can't play rugby anymore. But in 2017, I took a gap year. In 2018, I stayed in Motherwell in Port Elizabeth. I played the rugby again, almost represented Eastern Province. And even even though like it was hard, because like I've had a few challenges and obstacles. It was very hard, but yeah, I do believe that I'm still good and I'm still gonna be both. I'm not. I'm not gonna still gonna. I'm still gonna be the greatest. Yes, I'm still gonna be the greatest mm -hmm. rugby, the rugby, rugby player. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I assume I assume we should be expecting another installment of a book uh, from you. What are the lessons that you learned from releasing this one that you will take with you to authoring another book? The lessons I've learned from this one, I wanted to finish the next year, 2021, but it's abandoned. It's been a cool because 2017 is an fun of the year, it's been a good year, it's been a good year, it's been a good year, but it's been a good year. The challenges I've had, I didn't have... I'd say I didn't have any challenges, but yeah, the only challenge that I face is that good delivery, so like in what like good delay, like in what about my figure, what about do like that's one of the challenges that I've faced. The challenges that I'm 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 still learning from, yeah, but mm. so like. Mm. Okay, thank you so much, Buti, for joining us. I'm going to ask our two um, book club members to uh, say their last words, maybe advise you a little bit about how they found uh, the book. Your last words and some advice to Trapela as he confirms that he's going to write another book. Um, it was a beautiful story, as we've just spoken about, but um, I would have loved to hear him talk about the writing process and mentorship uh, when it comes to, liter um, to literature and writing. Uh, writing is difficult for anyone. So when he's talking about the challenges that he's had and uh, lessons that he's learning is to perhaps, if he didn't have one this round, to have a mentor, to, help, to have someone uh, take him through the writing process, the sentence structure, the grammar, um, the spelling, you know, um, just to make it that more enjoyable for the reader at home. Mm. I definitely I agree with Ropiwa, but I also think um, he needs to dig a little bit more deeper. I think there were some aspects of the book where I wanted more from him. I wanted to go a little bit more into mm. his mind and understand what exactly happened on that day when he was burned. So there were aspects of the book where I felt he could have gone a little bit more in depth. Um, but overall, I think it was a fantastic book. And I would just also like to say to him that he mustn't give up. Mm -hmm. And that flame that's burning inside of him, he must just keep it burning uh, because there is always hope and there is always um, a rainbow at the end of the mm. storm. Thank you very much, Rupiwa Mazena and Heidi Jokos, as well as Capella Koboto.